So we're going to talk very briefly about um, hackles and specifically hackles from the um, domestic poultry. Um, there are other hackles, we will come on to them, but um, these are the, the most widely used hackles, what one can, uh, one can use. And specifically you have a, a cock hackle, which is used on dry flies. Uh, the dry fly sits on top of the, the water, so it has to have a means of keeping that hook up off the uh, off the off the water and by looking at a cock hackle you will see that this is a dyed orange cock hackle from a, uh, a Chinese uh, cape Chinese cock cape and you will see that it has quite stiff, spiky fibers, especially towards the tip. Lower down, it's not as spiky. They, they tend to bend rather than at the tip, they're a lot more spiky. Do they generally have a thinner stem than hen hackles, would you say? Are they easier to tie in at the, the base, or is that depends? Mm. Not really, Will. Um, probably they're, they're, in this case, quite thick at the, at the base. I mean, I would use this probably more for tying, believe it or not, a wet fly. I mean, this is, this is the, uh, the thing we, we have to uh, talk about. Um, you can you can make a general statement in that uh, a cock hackle is used for a dry fly and a hen hackle is used for a wet fly but uh, indeed i mean there's many many examples where you would use a cock hackle on a, a, a wet fly not so much a hen hackle for a dry fly although there are examples of examples of uh, such. Um, I mean, th this is a sort of throwback to the days when um, floatants were not that uh, brilliant and you, you needed um, a decent spiky hackle to get that uh, dry fly to float. But um, I mean, certainly with modern day floatants, they are very, very good in as much that you could use a hen hackle um, treated with floatant and it would sit um, close to the uh, the water surface as a sort of um, a damp <laughs> a, a, a damp fly if you like not not wet not dry but just sitting lower down in the, uh, the, the surface so, as I say, we're, we're just going to talk about this briefly because um, the you know it's a, a big, big, wide subject. And if we start talking about uh, specifically cock hackles and, and cock capes, I mean there is such a a number and uh, variety of um, different colours from you know badger, grizzle, rusty dun, brassy dun. I mean, you can you can really talk for, for days and days on the subject. So I'm just holding up a hen hackle here, and you can see that it's quite dull in the centre. There's very little sort of spiky fibres to it. So this lends itself to a wet fly, where where trying to create a, a, a bit of motion to the fly, a bit of almost, you know, liveliness. And if you can imagine this being pulled through the water, it will compress and spring out again. Mm. So that's basically the, the two types of um, 
hackle you will see a cock hackle and a hen hackle now it's up to you how you you want to buy your feathers capes tend to be more expensive than buying um, hackles loose i'm just going to hold up a, a bag of feathers here these are, are all loose cock hackles um, obviously cheaper to buy um, the problem is that you spend a lot of time going through them to pick out a hackle of the size you want whereas with a cape you can just look at the cape pull out a feather and you're away to go I mean another thing about buying capes is that you, you'll see them in the shops in, in packets if you take them out of the packet don't ever bend the cape over to look at the, the feather because what will happen is the feather the, uh, the cape will split I mean, they do tend to split anyway but um, the shopkeeper won't be very pleased with uh, capes in half I see That's people important. doing that quite a lot. Are they just trying to gauge the size of hackles available? Yes, they're, they're looking at the, um, the back of the feather as, as much as anything. When, when you go into a shop and you're looking for a cape, you want to pull a feather out and look at the, the back to see that the, the colour is right the way through the feather. You're also looking for uh, damaged split uh, feathers. And you're also looking for at the, the tip, the the amount of oh wait, the amount of feathers that you can tie in, in small sizes. Especially so with um, cock hackles and cock capes, you want to be able to tie flies, you know, 18s, if not smaller. Um, by using um, saddle capes, you can, you can tie flies right the way down to, you know, size 28 or something if not smaller so you. so yeah that's the kind of um the goal with it with a a, a a dry fly cape where you can get those small sizes and tie that's right the ranges that you need that's right so that's a little bit about cock and hen Hackles. I mean, there is obviously a lot more to discuss and we'll come on uh, at a later time to talk about other types of uh, hackle you can use. So I think we'll, we'll just put a, a hook in the vise and put one of these hackles into, into use. We're going to be using a, a hen hackle, did you say? For the black we're going to be we're tying a wet fly, so we're going to tie a, a black panel, and I think originally they it was actually tied with a cock hackle, but um, I'm going to tie this one with a a hen hackle. What was, what was the chap's chap's name? Did you, did you say it was uh, like a? It was his Pen name was H. Chumley Pennell. He was a Victorian uh, sportsman writer. Um, he designed this pattern. I would imagine it would have been a a, a lake fly. Um, traditionally tied with a very long cock hackle, quite heavy in, in fact, um, by, by heavy I don't sort of imply weight, it, it's more um, bushiness if you like. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about these very confusing um, 
terminology at, at um, a later date, but um, essentially a fly which is tied lightly sinks deeper and faster as opposed to a, a fly tied heavily. So a, a lot of materials, a lot of, um, we talk about uh, body hackling, uh, which tend to fish higher in the water. So, water yes. so, you know, already contradictions coming into uh, the, the terminology we, we, we use in fly time. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to start the fly off just behind the eye. I'm using red silk here for something which we will find very apparent soon. I'm just running this down the, the bend, just above the bend. Just going to swap over and put my tying glasses on there. That's better. Yeah, I'm with you. So the, the next feather we're going, well, the, we're going to put a tail in and we're going to use a golden pheasant tippet feather from golden pheasant. And we'll just take out one of these feathers like so. Now you'll see that there is a Towards the base, a lot of feathers which don't have this black bar running through it. So if you just take off some of those, what you're left with is a intact, nicely double barred feather. Now, uh, Ordinarily, we would take the feather by pulling it away from the, the stalk and either tearing it with our thumb and finger or cutting it. But when we do that, can you see how the, the fibers come out of true? Yes. So what we have to do with the golden pheasant feather, just to turn it round, Hold it and just cut the, the fibers off like so and then pull it away. And what you should be left with now, if I just turn this round, is fibers which are all square. So I'm just going to take that one away. I want to tie this fly fairly light. So at one time people used to tie it where the, the black bar, the second black bar meets. But I actually prefer to tie it with that not showing. So I'm going to tie it in just a little bit behind. Leave the, the stalk on in a moment because we're going to now tie in some black floss. For the body. And again, I'm going to tie it in a few turns so, and hold it in place two turns two or three turns will be enough and i'm using very fine silver oval tinsel you could use wire there's, there's really no hard and fast rule and i'm going to tie this underneath the I'm going to use wire. There. So just underneath there. Just underneath. 
The reason why I'm using red silk is because I want to just show people one of the the big no-nos, if you like, in, in fly tying, and that's showing the, the thread at the, the back of the fly. I'm just doing this as a rough oh. example at the moment, but can you see the red silk showing through there? I can, that's, that's awful. Right, so in, if you're starting out, what you want to try and achieve is a neat pattern where that doesn't show. So I'm just going to take this off now to just to trim it up a little bit easier. And then take touching turns and run the silk up the hook shank. to a point just behind where we, we started off. So is that rod. just about an eye's, an eye's width, would you say? Nearly, or just a bit less than the, the width of the eye of the hook? The gap there. The gap is probably... Maybe a smidge less. I have a ruler somewhere, I, I could actually <laughs> mark it out, but um, if you can imagine the, the head of the fly taking up the, the space where, can you see there's a little bit of a shine on the hook? Yes, yeah. Yeah, just about there, and just a little space behind that to accommodate the, uh, the hackle. Which hook are you using there, Mark? That this out? is a B175, so it's 12, but... Uh, I'm with you. Could use a 170, it really doesn't matter. What I'm doing now is just stroking the, the floss up with my thumbnail just to remove all the little bits of um, fibre which have come loose. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm just yeah. cleaning up the, the floss a bit. And if you hold it up vertically and then make your turn, again, making sure there's no little sort of tying silk behind, you, you can now pull the silk quite tight as you've made that one turn. And the, the idea of the exercise is to make a very thin and smooth body without any lumps. Hold it in the up position. It's easier to cut if you can cut it on the top of the, the hook than the underneath. Just one little fibre of this there and cutting that out. And then we'll wind the the oval tinsel up. Now, again, it's it's personal preference, but I like to put that turn in close to the the, uh, the the back of the tail, and then just wind up quite tight. Try and sort of pull the oval tinsel into the the floss, and that will stop it from traveling. That's not particularly straight. Oh, 
what I'm looking for is nice evenness. It's a, bit, a little bit too long on the camera. Hitting the camera. Yeah, yeah. We can just make two or three turns, hold that in place, and then cut off the, the spare knob. Nice. So, can you see mine on there, Mark? Am I okay there? Yeah, what you've done, it's not very level. Um, just going to see. <laughs> yeah, you could have made another turn with the, the wire rib, actually. Oh, okay. You've... you've Could have gone round another time, but uh, it's a, it's okay, it's it's fine now. So we take a a hen hackle, and what we're going to do is just to bend it to have a look at its length. Obviously, I don't want an oversized hackle or undersized hackle. So I'm just looking at the, the tip of the, the hen hackle. It's just sticking out just a little bit way past the, the, the barb of the hook. So that's, that's fine for this particular hackle. And if you look at the, the hen hackle, you'll see at the, the base is a lot of sort of fluffy loose stuff. So you want to take it up just a little bit higher than that and you can just pinch it out with your thumb finger and that's the waste we can we can throw that away. So I'm going to put the end handle in. Now what I'm going to talk about is the way you put the, the feather on and turn it. Now, at this being a wet fly, we want the, the good side of the feather, if you like, the, um, the concave, the convex surface. outermost and the concave so it's, it's bending away from the eye of the hook the bend the natural bend of the feather is bending away from the eye of the, of, of the hook really. sorry well that wasn't very clear again i'm uh, sorry uh, so the natural bend of the feather is curving over like kind of the back of the hook if you were to lay it flat it would be bending over the back of the hook rather than up and away from the hook that's right that's right yes so we'll just put that in there take the hackle pliers and just bring it up slowly to ensure that it actually, when we put it round, it stays in position. Once, again, once you've put one turn on, you, you're able to manipulate the feather a little bit easier. It's not as easy to do this in slow motion, actually. So, okay. Once we've got to this stage, move all the fibers out of the way. What I tend to do is grip some of the fibers lower down 
the hackle we're not going to tie in. I'm sure if you can see this. Just pull it away from the, the hook and tie them in. Just two turns. Release the heckle pliers and then if you can see that I've tied in sort of extra bunch yeah. of fibers. And I think this gives it a little bit more strength. I'm going to cut the tip now as close as I can. Because the other big no-no in fly tie is having bits of feather sticking out beyond the, the eye. Oh, right, okay. So I'm happy with this at the moment. So again, just a little turn in to hold it. And we can do the whip finish. That off. So that's the the black panel. Let's pull it back so you can just see. Very neat. That's that's nice. Uh, my my body went a bit wrong there, but uh, I think I put. Uh, Just um, pin mine mark in it in a second. I'm just uh, primping it. Uh, that's very nice. Uh, I, my hackle's not got on quite right there, Mark. If you, I think there's. Uh, Let's have a look at yours, Will. Uh, I zoom out a bit there. Yeah. It's quite long. If you look at the the uh, the, the length of the, the hackle, they go way past the, the barb. They do, um, yeah. I was thinking stylistically I might like a longer hackle, but now I've looked at it. I'm yeah. not really sure. I think it's, it's a bit out of proportion. And uh, my tail's quite long there compared to your... Yes, yes. Um... Again, nothing, nothing wrong with that. I mean, some people do like to tie the um, the black panel with a with a long tail. Um, I've I've got examples here of uh, panels I've, I've tied over the years. I'm just going to try and get some put up. So that's. One of my preferred patterns. It is tied with a quite a long tail, but I, I use a tying silk body with a little bit of um, pearl on the on the, the butt and on the body. Okay, that's and just varnish that. Yeah. Varnish that in. If I can just see it on my screen. A very lightly sparsed Tied hackle. Is that what one turn or two turns there? That's probably just one turn on there of a hen hackle. Now, if I show you another example of a panel that tied heavy, mm. you can see that it's it's got a seal spur body. I've used um, oval in the, in the rib, and it's got what they call a body heckle, a palmed heckle going wow. down. So it's it's tied heavy, but this would actually fish higher up in the uh, in the water than this one. Yes. Tied sparse. So it doesn't imply weight. No, that's nice. 
and that's got three wire, three or oval tinsel turns at the back at uh, Evergreen. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Very nice. Um, and would you say that hang hackles are slightly longer in, in proportion with the one I just tied there? Yes, yes. So something with a very long hackle like that, a bushy hackle. Yeah, better, um, better longer hackle on a palmered body. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah. And the idea of this particular pattern would be to create a, a, a wake or a bit of a, a sort of movement around it to stimulate trout. Um, you would probably fish this on the uh, top dropper certainly middle position yeah very um, nice i'm just gonna and I mean, there's one I, I tied many years ago for a friend of mine in ireland with uh, the uh, the duck fly in, in mind and that's got a a blue uh holographic tinsel body and uh, a shorter black hen hackle. Shorter hackle there. That's uh, yeah. That looks very dinky. Um, yeah. And a shorter tail again. Yeah. Almost yeah. like a, almost like a bit of a tag there. The tail uh, that you. No, there's like no, the there's nothing underneath that. But uh, yeah. So you know the black panel becomes the blue panel. Um, the claret panel is still quite popular in, in parts of uh, South Wales. Um, the Brecon reservoirs, I think they still use it. Um, you can see I've got quite a long tail on that, but uh, again, you, I would probably, if I tied that today, I would probably tie it a lot. Um, Different uh, character with the long yeah. tail, and is that a? Yeah. That is that like a, a brown or a red game on the on the front? That's a, a, a red game, red hackle, game. but with um, claret seals fur and a pearl running through it. So it's a fairly si simple pattern, if you like, a very effective pattern in its in its. Uh, uh, did, did small you know, sizes. A CDC one anywhere there, Mark? It's, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I was going kind of on to tell that. I remember seeing somewhere that, that looked yeah, uh, that's right. particularly sedgy. So we're talking about sort of where you would you would uh, fish it on a on a team. This is one I would tie on the uh, top dropper. And it's got CDC as a hackle rather than the. the uh, Is that a pearl ring? Back hen. So I put pearl. I'm just looking for my dubbing needle so I can. Um, there we go. That's it. So I've put uh, pearl on a tying silk, black tying silk body, and a little mm -hmm. stubby tail. And that's three CDC feathers tied. And that's three, three CDC placed on together and wrapped round together. Nice. And very, very long hackles there, obviously. Yeah. CDC, but that's the character of the fly. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Well, I think that's... Oh, well, we've got like just putting up one here, which is a, a, a an olive. So again, you know, just run through maybe a, a, the amount of uh, different uh, seals for you have in a pack and, and run up um, different simple patterns. There's another one there with a, a yellow body, a little bit that's of a, twinkle a yellow, on that. Yellow panel. Yep. What's the rib on that, Mark? This one has got, I think it's probably gold oval. I've just got a little bit of twinkle in there as well, actually. Oh, yes. That's, um, what do you call that, uh, uh, that twinkle there? Uh, that's pearl. 
Is it? That's Pearl, yeah. So it's certainly, you, you, you can play around with it. Um, I think I've just noticed I've put a bit of oval in the... Um, three turns on the butts. On the butts as well, actually, it doesn't... That's, uh, that's crystal yeah. flash, isn't it? That's what that's called on the yeah. crystal that's flash. It. Yeah. Gold oval, and then up through there. Very, very nice. Yellow silk. Red game at the head there. Everybody. Red game at the head as well. And um, yeah, I mean these patterns are always worth having around if if you can if you haven't got anything um, to match a particular uh, fly or insect you you've uh, spooned out of a trout or you can see hatching something like this very simple you've got the colour near enough right yeah. put it on put it on. Okay. Okie dokie. So I, that's the, the black that's the black panel done and dusted.